Support the show by donating at themusicbuds.com. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Music Buds podcast. This is episode number 27, and my name is Henry. This week, I'm honored to be joined by the Emmy-winning composer Christopher Carter, known for a numerous amount of projects with uh, Marvel and DC, including Batman the Killing Joke, the Spectacular Spider-Man series, Teen Titans. I mean, the list goes on and on. Christopher, I can't tell you how much it means for you to be taking the time to talk. I have really have loved your work for a long time, and so thank you for being here. Thanks, Henry. I really appreciate the invitation. Yeah, of course. Nice to join you. <laughs> well, first off, how's life going these days? Uh, 2020. It will be an, an adjective, I think, for <laughs> for all of us that will probably have not the best, you know, not the best memories. It's been a tough year, I think, for for everybody. And yeah. um, uh, you know, all things considered, I'm doing well, staying healthy. Those around me, I hope the same with you. I mean, it's just yeah. we we're kind of in a whole new whole new world with this thing. Yeah, it's like every day is a, a different challenge you know it, it's a new new day so yeah um, I, I saw a funny meme actually that that was like people sitting here at the end of 2020 waiting for you know july 31st 12 31 2020 and oh, yeah. then at midnight it actually goes to 13 1 2020 and they're like no <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i, I uh, you know I, I i don't think this thing has any kind of calendar date expiration as much as i w- wish it would but i i do i'm i'm uh, reassured you know it seems like like we're on the right direction so yeah with Hope vaccines so. and stuff <laughs> anyway yeah. enough about the pandemic no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> It's, yeah, must be must be said. Uh, well, uh, I guess just kicking things off, uh, I'm curious as to how you got started in music because I know that you were very young when you got to work with Warner Brothers. How did you get involved with with music? Is that something you always wanted to do? Music always was something I wanted to do. Um, I was I started playing the piano when I was four and picked up a bunch of different instruments and. Um, I think I wasn't really good enough at any of them to think about being a performer, but it certainly, it sparked my interest in composing because you, you, you find out what if different instruments, what it takes to play them, play the trumpet, play the violin, play the double bass, all these different things. And I started to see how these instruments can work together to, to create music. And um, I think it was kind of a passing thought, well, maybe I could, could get into film, but then the more I looked into being film composing, and especially when I got to college and I got a, a composing degree, I was watching Batman the Animated Series. And I was just like, oh, wouldn't this be the most amazing thing <laughs> to get to work on that one day? And um, the music team was led by Shirley Walker, who is one of the most amazing composers. And unfortunately was, you know, outside of the superhero world, wasn't really as well known. But she used Batman the Animated Series as kind of a um, a proving ground for young composers. She specifically went to Warner Brothers and said, I want to use this as a situation where I can give composers their first chance to write, hmm. to work with an orchestra, to see what, what actually working at a higher level in the business is as they get their career started. Wow. And um, I happened to play in the orchestra at, at the college I went to, the University of North Texas, with Ian Walker, who happens to be Shirley's son. Oh. And Ian was very, very gracious to uh, open the door to meeting Shirley. And when I graduated from North Texas, uh, she actually invited me out to be her assistant. So I got to watch Batman the Animated Series being created and scored. Mm-hmm. And all this while I was making coffee and typing and answering the phone. And, and I figured out, well, you know, if I do a really bad job at making coffee, maybe I'll get put over into doing other yes. things. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I mean, that's an exaggeration, but, but yeah. she did ultimately give me a chance to, uh, to try some, a little bit of music on Batman and the producers approved of it and she approved of it. And so I was actually able to join her team right out of college as, wow. uh, as a composer. And so I didn't even really necessarily think that superheroes would be, the place that that a large chunk of my career would be focused on, mm. but uh, it certainly has been a, a wonderful ride because I, I happen to love those shows and that kind of music a lot. So it's it's been really amazing to be associated with that all these years. Yeah, I mean, of course, there are so many. Uh, one I, I just wanted to make sure to pass on to you. So Batman Beyond, the the animated series, I wanted to to tell you how special that show was for me growing up. It's one of those that I had on like repeat, and it was just really one that 
I, it was one of my first introductions into the Batman world and to DC. And I just wanted to tell you how special your music included was into that introduction. That is so cool. I mean, it was a very special show. It was such a, a departure from what, what people thought Batman could be. And so they were, I think that the producers were very inspired and very brave to try telling a different story. And it was amazing how beloved it is now because at the time as with most things when they kind of change up the, the formula yeah. a lot of people kind of pushed back against it but um yeah i mean that that show musically was very interesting too because we stepped away from the orchestra and did something that was a little more grungy a little more electronic uh more twisted samples and guitars and that kind of thing and yeah it was i it, we we all had written pieces as a demonstration to the producers of what we could do apart from the orchestra and one of those demo pieces ended up becoming the main title. And it was totally not intended to be that way, but mm -hmm. uh, they really gravitated toward, towards that one piece and a couple other pieces too on that initial demo all ended up in the series at one, one way or another. But uh, that's so cool that you, you, you really have fond memories of it. I, it was really special to me too. Well, uh, with what you were just mentioning, when, when you are either working solo or with uh, a team as you do with like Batman, the killing joke and, and others, do you find that you typically try and create a certain sound for a certain character or a certain, I don't know, theme, or are, is it really different for every project, every moment you're just kind of changing up your, your style and just a fitting what's best for the, the story at the moment. Well, you've, you've actually touched on two things that I think are important for me to, to note that, you know, I've, uh, I do a lot of projects on my own, but much of my career has been focused working with Michael McQuish and Lolita Ritmanis. We were all, Beginning, we all began our career under Shirley on Batman the Animated Series, and on all the superhero shows we've done together, it's kind of a, a joint, a, a joint decision that we make between us and the producers of how much we want the music to be associated with a certain character. Uh, I will say, as a composer, we love that. We we <laughs> love to come up with a cool theme, and then it's fun to see how you can explore different ways of using that theme uh, in different situations, so that the audience, even subliminally, they kind of associate that with the character. But uh, there's even kind of more, more even really, really subtle ways of, of doing that. On the show Young Justice that we work on, there was this, uh, this group of, of supervillains called The Light. And we came up with a, uh, actually Lolita came up with a synthesized ambience. It's just kind of this, uh, this kind of bubbling synthesizer sound. It's not even a melody, but it's associated with light. And if you watch very carefully in every scene involving the light, there's that, that bubbling sound in the background of the music. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it, it, uh, I, I would say more often than not, we do try to find ways to make those associations. We all kind of subscribe to Shirley's way of composing, which is, it was kind of, it's kind of old school in a way, but we really want to write music that is, is, is fitting to the story. So the story motivates what the music is. And we might decide on an overall sound for the, the show or the movie, but we really want to create something that that's, that's, inexorably linked to these elements of the, of the film. So I think for us, more often than not, it's, it's, there's, a, there's definitely a, um, a, 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 you know, a, a, a conscious decision to create music in a certain way or with a certain theme or a certain melody. Yeah. Do you find that, uh, since you have done a, a lot of both, that working, like both working solo and then working with a team is like each has their, their place, you know, each has their, you know, their strengths and is there... I mean, it, or do you enjoy both as much just for different reasons or actually, yes, totally, totally yeah. much for, for different reasons. Um, Michael and Lolita and I have kind of a shared, a shared desire to have a good work life balance and working in the film industry is just one of these jobs that completely can, can take over your life and leave you with you know, little sleep and poor health <laughs> if you let it. And in having the three of us working together, we can actually split up the work. And this, 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 that actually has a, a, a dual benefit. We can have work-life balance. We can eat and sleep regularly. Yeah. We can see our families and our friends. And we can do things outside of, of our partnership. So it's not our life is not all about work. Yeah, and that's a trade-off then too, because obviously it's not a, about you, you give up some of the individual accolade to be in a team. Uh, you know, it's not just all about what Chris wants to write. It's about something that we all have to do together. But I've found in, in the 25 years that we've been working together, it's been uh, just the quality of life is so much better to, to share it with, with two people that are my dear friends, that we trust each other and we can, we, we can help support each other in this marathon of having a career because it's not a sprint. It's definitely a long-term thing that you have to be able to manage.
Yeah. And I, I, what I, I do love about those collaborations is that you will have certain tracks that are, you know, just you, or it might just be one of them, but then there are some that you do all together. And I think that's so cool where there's that, these different separate entities of the, the same catalog. I think that's so cool. <laughs> well, it, it's kind of, when we're writing, we might write a theme together or a song together, but the individual, the music that's happening during the episode, we all do individually. Hmm. And as we're, we're writing it, I actually, I mentioned there's kind of a dual benefit. The, the benefit for the producers on their end is you get kind of 300% of the creative effort in a score right. going to something. So it's like we really can can try and, and raise the creative level of, of the whole project by working together. But we, uh, we'll, when I write a, a piece, I'll put it on Dropbox and Michael and Lolita will listen to it. And if there's a theme that they've come up with for a certain character, I can hear it and, and then incorporate it into my own writing. So we're all kind of working together. But at this point in our career, uh, you know, there will be some piece of music that has to come from Michael's piece into Lolita's piece, and we'll just listen. And even without planning, it just seems to kind of work together. <laughs> so yeah. there's kind of a, you know, the synergy that we've built up over, over so long of getting to work together. Yeah, I, I think it's would be so fascinating, fascinating and creatively stimulating to work in a world like uh, the DC or Marvel films, because like with Batman, like with the the Killing Joke, it, it feels like a noir, and I uh, the track. Hoods present the hood. I wanted to bring that one up in particular because uh-huh. I listen to it constantly and it feels like when you listen to it, it's like dropping you into a 1940s noir, like a jazz yeah. club or something, you know, and is that kind of open world really exciting to be in? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've lost track of the number of different ways musically that we've been asked to play Superman or Batman or, uh, you know, any of the, the accompanying things because we, we worked on um, Batman the Brave and the Bold, which was very uh, reminiscent of the, the old uh, Adam West TV show. And so we had a lot of guitars and horns and bongos. And yeah, in, in The Killing Joke, we, we had this... Um, you know, the symbiosis of, 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 uh, you know, kind of 1940s stuff with more crazy, <laughs> I'm losing adjectives. But, you know, it, was, it was, the whole movie was very intense and that kind yeah, of yeah. the insanity uh, we used to kind of a modern orchestral uh, avant-garde approach for that. So yeah, putting those two worlds together was really interesting because of course, one of the reasons that it's very noirish is that it feels kind of like a fantasy and yeah. what Bruce Tim pointed out to us in his version of the killing joke is that this is this is the joker's story but how can you trust his reality yeah so there was actually a conscious decision of of pulling in some kind of noir influences to make it feel otherworldly because you don't really know if you can trust this version of events <laughs> so I, yeah. I love the uh the, you know the just being being really uh really indefinite and leaving a lot open to interpretation yeah and now this is uh, it's a very broad question and you know vague but i i always want to ask like what is it like being able to be a film composer and of course many other elements for a living i just feel like getting to be a part of so many of these big projects i just feel like that would just be so in- incredible I, I i and also just getting to be a, a film composer for a living you know the novelty of working on a new project it's still as exciting as it was with my first episode of working on Batman, the animated series. Um, it's, I think that it's not as much of a dream job as you might expect getting to sit around writing, writing music all day, because it sure, actually yeah, is a yeah. lot of hard work. Yeah. It does take a lot of, of time and effort and commitment and, you know, racking your brains and you don't have time with the deadlines to really get uh, lost in writer's block. You have to find some way to kind of push on through and get the music written mm-hmm. on time. It's, as much being a small business owner as it is a creative artist job, because right. I do, you know, you have to manage, you have to manage your bills and you have to manage advertising and building new clients. And the, the creative aspect is only one part of it. So it's, it's, it's so cool. It is a dream to actually, you know, to, to make a living creating worlds with music it's mm-hmm. really something very unique and i and i'm i'm grateful for the opportunity to, to do that but the 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 reality of it being uh, you know a challenging small business operation is definitely one that you have to you have to balance for yeah and, and i think that is important to to think about because you know someone may listen to the music or hear, hear the music and you know oh it's great music and but then you don't realize all of the other elements that have to go into getting that 
project to the screen. And so, you know, it's, it's a lot to handle, I'm sure. Well, yeah. And another thing that it's about being a film composer specifically is, uh, you know, going way back in music history, like J.S. Bach and, and Haydn and Mozart, these guys, they were composers for hire. They had a patron that paid them to write the music. And somewhere around Beethoven's time, being a composer shifted into more of this artiste thing. You know, I'm an artist and I create this music for the world. And whereas... Uh, the really older composers that had patrons were more craftspeople, almost in the way that you, you'd have, you know, a bricklayer or some other kind of craftsperson. Mm -hmm. I'm actually creating music for a project, for a client. And so it's, you, you do have more parameters. You can't just go and write whatever you want. You have to write what, what your client wants you to write. And it's not even so much about the, the notes of music as it is the feeling. They have a feeling they want that music to, to, to develop. So as a, as a craftsperson, you have to figure out how to, satisfy what they want because they usually they can't talk to you in a musical way you right. we have to all talk about drama talk about story talk about feelings and um, translate that into music and so it really is more being a filmmaker who does music than a musical artist yeah well now I, I do want to get to some of these uh other projects that you have uh recently but i did want to ask you briefly about you have uh, been a featured lecturer at a number of universities including the North Carolina School of the Arts, which is uh, yes. relatively near me. What has that been like being getting to teach composition and, and or uh, lecture on it? Well, first of all, I have such respect for people that have made a career teaching because that, that commitment to wanting to help people uh, is help people learn and grow. I mean, that's it's amazing and so admirable. And especially during, now during 2020, where everyone's having to do everything online, it's it's doubly challenging. So I, I, I admire it. I don't think that I could be a full-time professor. It just, it's, uh, it's just a special a kind lot. of person. It's a lot. And, it's a lot. But I, I do enjoy that, that aspect of helping the light bulb come on in, in students' heads. And so, yeah, I've, I've, um, I've been very blessed to, to go and speak to different colleges and help, you know, help hopefully open some, open some doors and some, and some uh, eyes of what people can do to, uh, to, to, to be a film composer. I really want to help. I guess what it is, Shirley was, Shirley Walker dedicated her career to helping young composers in addition to the writing. And I just would love to be able to give back in that way. So being able to kind of back and, and, and help educate some of the stuff that she, passed along what Shirley has told me really means a lot to me. And North Carolina School of the Arts was amazing. Um, uh, John Macchiari was the, the chancellor there for, for many years. That's uh, who I uh, who brought me there. Uh, Chris Heckman, I don't know if he's still there. Mm. It was one of the, the heads of the department. He's, he's a great composer and uh, very motivated to help young students. The facilities are amazing. I mean, North Carolina, what a beautiful place. I just love, yeah. love visiting there. Yeah. As we were talking about, you do have some recent projects that I would I would love to hear about. Wh which of the which ones would you like to discuss first? Because uh, I know there are some things in the works. Oh sure. Well, I I have spent so much of my career creating music for film. I kind of lost that identity of who I was as as the artist composer. And recently, pandemic lockdowns help you <laughs> help you yeah, yeah. give you give you lots of time to ruminate about things. And um, I, I have am making a concerted effort to uh, get out there and 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 uh, start creating music specifically purely for music's sake. Um, as a as a composer who does music for film, I'm so used to telling a story with my music, even though it's not a film associated with these projects, I still think there's a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And uh, most recently, I released a, a piece called Autumn Ruminations, and it's a piece for piano and orchestra. And it's actually a way for me to both, I mean, it started out as a way of, I've got to express something of how I'm feeling about being locked in and just the turmoil in the world. And uh, it was actually walking outside and not that LA has much of a change of seasons, but it, you know, you can see <laughs> yeah. some of the change of color and in the trees and the leaves. And, and I just, I, I kind of became fixated with the idea of maybe I should be, maybe I should be writing about this. And I am a terrible word writer of uh, lyrics, writing books. Mm. Ugh, I can't do it, but music yeah. is something that, that kind of is easier for me to express. And I thought, you know, what if I could check in every season as the seasons change and write about how I'm feeling at that point. So I'm actually making a, it's going to be a series of four short pieces starting in autumn. And then there's going to be one in winter and then spring and then summer. And 
you know, I, I'm staking my claim that by summer of 2021, life may be hopefully on some semblance of normal. And I, yeah. I'm happy to eat my words if it's not true, but I'm going to hold on to that hope because this piece is about hope. It's about mm-hmm. hope of being patient and hanging in there for better times ahead. And so when this piece is done with all four seasons, I'd like to put it together for a piece uh, that can be played in a live concert setting, you know, for piano and orchestra. So that's kind of a, this is, it's kind of a long-term project I'm working on. I also have been uh, creating music as a, in kind of a, an EDM club vibe called the KR protocol. Hmm. And uh, as a, a DJ producer, I've I actually I've got the decks back there. I've been uh, okay. live streaming <laughs> DJ sets because I was literally starting to get into the club scene in LA when the pandemics happened. So oh, cool. I thought, well, I can't, can't be DJing in clubs now, but I can at least DJ on the internet. So I've been, uh, yeah. I have a monthly series with a little bit of a, of a sci-fi geek tie in. Sure. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, sure. I'm doing a, I'm doing a, a Saturday, let's see the third Saturday of every month, a live stream of a dance party. So it's like dance and, and have fun, like kind of disco-y uh, yeah. house, house music is called the Bay 94 club, okay. which Bay 94 is of course the place where the Millennium Falcon and Star Wars yeah. was on Tatooine. Yes, of course. <laughs> and, and then on the first Tuesday of every month, I'm doing a kind of dark techno, more of an electronic music performance, just uh, underground Un, more uh, off the beaten path kind of electronic music. And that's called the Kronos Club, which of course Kronos is the, the Klingon home world. So I have yeah. both Star Trek and Star Wars mythos <laughs> got it covered. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been so fun to, to, to DJ and get into that electronic music. And I've, I've, uh, I've been discovering a whole other, I was so focused on like orchestral and traditional film music. It's been so fun to learn about house and, and, you know, just the tremendous history of electronic music that's been out there. Yeah. I I think, uh, you know, the more people I talk to, uh, it it just seems like the pandemic has forced people to come up with new creative ways of getting emotion out. And whether it's, you know, with the autumn ruminations or whether it's with the the live streams, it's like these new ways or, or relatively new methods of, you know, connecting with people. And I think that's really great. Yeah, I mean, I think that in the same way that Autumn Ruminations, that series is going to be about hope. I think the live streaming is too. I, I know I have a lot of friends that were, were big club heads and they just can't go and, and they're 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 just going crazy having to be at home and not being around people. Yeah. And the, the live streams, I, I know I've they've actually shared some videos. They'll get on their own Zoom chats during the live stream parties and they're they're dancing. And, oh, cool. You know, even though they're all in different places, we're all still having that hope to reconnect because we're still you know, we're still here and we're going to make it through this. Yeah. That's awesome. You, with you having brought up Star Trek and Star Wars, are you much of a movie watcher, TV watcher, or are you typically pretty busy? I I love movies. I love seeing movies in the theater, that experience of, of being well, again, with people, but Mm -hmm. being in a room together and sharing this, this movie watching experience is, is my big thing. Um, I try, I do try to get out of the studio and get outside when I can. Yeah, I like to to bike and exercise and run. In terms of being together with people, doing it in a theater is something that it's always been appealed to me. So I don't mm-hmm. watch TV as much, and uh, if I do, I'm usually watching a movie. But uh, I do, so I'm, I wouldn't be able to talk about Game of Thrones <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> or okay. any of the, the big TV series right now. I haven't seen The Queen's Gambit either. I'm so oh, that, that, that I will say that one's great. I, I don't watch. I got to find it. I don't watch uh, as <laughs> much TV either, but that I, yeah. I have loved that one. In terms of this year, have you watched any any good movies by chance? It's mostly been catching up on the old ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the old yeah. ones. I, I haven't been watching many new things either, so I've been. Yeah, I, I have. I actually have two sons. Uh, one is is uh, seventeen, and the other's uh, almost twelve. Mm. And uh, we've been enjoying all of my favorite old movies. Uh, my older one, especially, is taking a film uh, elective in high school, so he's really into making his own films. And my oh, other, cool. my younger son, is actually into animation. He's he's drawing and. Maybe we'll love to go into animation when he gets older. Oh, great. Um, so it's really been a lot of sharing all the old cool movies together. We watched being John Malkovich the other night and, oh, yeah. and um, you know, sharing all my favorite movies for even from the eighties and stuff when I was their age. And uh, so that's, that's been really fun to just kind of, it's the best thing right now is to sit down on the couch and just share a movie together. Yeah. That's, that's been the, the case for me. So I, I, I understand that totally. And yeah, I've, yeah. Uh, I've been going back and been watching uh, 70s and 80s detective and crime shows like Columbo and uh, oh, the, yeah. the, the Rockford Files, which 
is a totally new kind of me, you know, TV or part of TV that I have not watched much of. And so I'm just diving into this whole kind of escapist <laughs> uh, television. So. so yeah. What about movies? What, are, what other cool movies have you watched? Mm, movie wise? Gosh, I feel like I've been catching up on, Oh boy. Whenever I'm put on the spot, I almost I'll always blank. Mm. <laughs> I, I am going to be watching. I, I think it comes out on VOD soon. I'm going to be watching the new Christopher Nolan film tenant. I, oh, yes. you know, cause I, I, I didn't see it in the theaters and, and so I'm dying to see dying to see tenant. So that, that's here. the one I'll, I'll bring up, even though I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I, it's all, same here. Same here. Yeah. Christopher, is there anything else that uh, you'd like to mention? Uh, I just wanted to say that um, we would love to connect me, my partners and I would love to connect on social media. Um, the name of our partnership is dynamic music partners. And if you search for us on Instagram or Facebook, you can find our pages there for me personally. Uh, I'm on uh, Instagram as Uta dear official and <laughs> the KR protocol. <laughs> and I would love to connect with any of your listeners that would want uh, via social media. You can send me a message. Uh, let me know what's interesting uh, about the, you know, what you like with the, um, you know, with the different shows that we've been working on. And uh, so just reach out and connect. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, sure. And uh, I can put uh, the, all that information in the show notes and on the website okay. as well. And so pe- that way people can have a lot of different ways of accessing it. Sounds so. good. Thanks, Henry. Well, uh, Christopher, uh, I mean, of course, there are just endless amounts of things that we could talk about. Uh, and I, I love talking to you. Is there anything in particular you would like to discuss that I haven't touched on? Um, I don't want to leave anything unsaid. And it's OK if not. I just like to ask. Oh, no, this is great. No, it's I, I really appreciate the chance to, to sit down with you and talk. And, and I hope we can maybe do it again. And some other projects are, are coming up. But uh, we're working, my uh, partners, Michael and Alita and I are working on the fourth season of Young Justice right now. It's going to be on HBO Max sometime in 2021. I don't know the exact date. Awesome. But uh, for fans of that show, please be sure to check it out because this season is amazing. It just blows my mind what, they've, what, they're, what they're doing with the story. Oh, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, that is about it for the show. Please follow the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Music Buds. Check out themusicbuds.com. We hope you enjoyed it uh, as much as we did, and we'll see you next time.